well, Simon. There was a dramatic game, as you probably, probably expect, but I think you'd be delighted the way you responded to them hitting the front in the fourth quarter to, to get the win. Oh, yeah, certainly. Um, you know, there was a fair bit of uh, rotation of players going on, foul trouble, you know, you got to try and it's hard to navigate um, for both teams down the stretch. But um, I thought our blokes uh, were really sound of mind, um, clear of thought, and um, despite the pressures, um, I thought they executed wonderfully well under a fair bit of duress, so it was good. It would have been hard not to hark back to that game three when you had the big lead, they came back and hit the front. How were you able to do today what you couldn't do back in that game three and stem the tide and go on that 14 and zero run? Uh, well, firstly, that was not a, a matter for us at all. Like, we didn't tap into that. Um, it's a different team, different season um, for both clubs. And uh, you know, we, we're just in those situations trying to take care of what we know to take care of. Um, so. No, we moved on from that. Um, you know, there's been a little bit of, not mischief, but maybe misunderstanding about what we were trying to achieve with our game two, three reviews prior to the season. Um, it wasn't like a old Ronald Dale Barassi G up for the club. It was more of a, okay, there was an intensity and a level of, um, and a synchronicity of our defense during those, those games that was of a really, really high level. Um, so our focus was really about, okay, we want to go straight back to start with that, replicate it in round one and continue with it as a barometer for us. Um, so, yeah, it's just the game three thing, you guys have got it misunderstood. Jasper, we'll throw to you. Simon, Joe T was outstanding. Is it a possibility for the in-service coming game. Uh, it, was, it was a great matchup for him, right, um, against Luau and Shul, but could, could you possibly get the ball in his hands a bit more down the wide block? Who am I speaking to, sorry? Uh, Jasper. Sorry, Jasper. Okay. Um, who's, whose hands we taking it out of? Sorry about that. Whose hands you wanted out of? Like, he was good tonight, 10 or 13 from the field. It's pretty efficient, but, um, you know, guys are making plays to help him with that. Um, you know, as he flourishes in our system, as he gets more familiar with guys, um, you know, he's naturally going to get more touches. But, you know, like guys are making plays. Uh, we scored 90, 94 points against one of the best defences in the league. Um, I think we're doing OK. I think we're tracking there OK. But thanks for your comment. Uh, we saw, obviously, that mid-screen was pretty incredible. Well, what did you make of um, the altercation I asked about uh, the proceedings? Um, I've got some questions um, resulting from that. Like the altercation, I mean, Peeling's a good kid. I like him. I think he'd have his time back. Um, he wouldn't do that. Motion got the better of him. Um, you know, I think Zaya has got to refrain from jumping in as first man. Um, I think we settled OK. Um, it was a great, great finish, great play. Um, I don't think Creek did anything to warrant um, the reaction that it got. But I've got a question for the reviewing panel, though, because we just had a look at it, and on the night we knew, or at the time we knew, I mean, I see Dave Barlow in the fracas off the bench. Now, Dave, don't get me wrong, he's just being a peacemaker. But I don't know why he's allowed to return to the game. So my question there is that when we go to the review panel that they get it right. Um, and I don't think he should have been allowed to play any further part in the game because of that. Um, but our guys kept their cool, they stayed on the bench, they did the right thing. But I want to know, I want answers to that, actually. Stephen Barrett, we'll go to you. Yeah, Simon, um, in that, speaking of that altercation, was the original communication to you that Mitch was going to go, that he was going to, he got the uh, taunting foul and also one for um, sort of chasing after Peeling, and then that was uh, on the review, they just gave him tech. Was that what was communicated to you originally? For what it's worth, I think that he didn't, there's no way he should have gone, but is that what your understanding yeah, There's was? no communication from the referees to us at all, outside of the, the call at the end. Um, so, no, nah, all we knew was when the, the final could say, same time, same lifetime as you guys, we got the same information. Um, but yeah, I'd be horrified if Creaky's held accountable for any more than that. I mean, surprisingly enough, you know, they throw the cheap shot, 
we get the bucket, a taunting foul, like the NBL is going to use that as a highlight reel. It's going to be on the news tonight, and somehow we're going to find fault in it. It's ridiculous to me. Um, and they end up with a free throw. I mean, come on. We can do better than that. And um, aside from the altercation with Duncan, so where does that one rate among the dunks you've seen? I mean, that was, that was NBA standard as far as I'm concerned. Um, yeah, it's going to make a nice poster. Um, uh, I just saw it. I wanted to see, because I know what my eyes saw, but I wanted to confirm with it with who, who left the bench for Melbourne at the end of the game and why it wasn't looked after and why it wasn't accounted for. And um, so I did review, the, see the dunk, and it, it was a pretty picture. Uh, that's certainly across a sports bar somewhere as of tomorrow. And uh, just on Joe Chi, um, do, do you feel like he's he had to get used to refereeing in this country? Because that, that's often what we see with guys coming overseas. They've got to adjust to the way that the game's refereed here. And do you think that's a hurdle that he's overcome? Obviously, he found foul trouble a couple of Yeah, um, no. I feel like the referees actually need to adjust to him. If we go back to the game um, on, on Friday night against New Zealand, um, you know, he gets called for a moving screen when he's pushed into a guy who grabs him. I mean, there's nothing, there's no adjustment for him to be made there. Um, he gets called for a, a push out on an offensive rebound where there is no push out. That's not an adjustment he has to make. Um, I've got video all through the preseason of sim things that are very, very similar. Um, he needs to be allowed to play. Um, and, and we're forthright with it. You know, he's such a good kid. He's such a good player. It's such a, a jewel in the crown of this league. And we've got to have him on the floor. Um, we can't, we, I don't think his adjustment needs to be done. His adjustments need to be from a basketball perspective. Um, but to the, to the referee, I don't think so. I think they need to make some adjustments to him. And just one last one for me, just for you, Kyle. Um, what's it like having a guy like Joe Chi um, sort of behind you at the defensive end, protecting that rim, changing shots, probably take some pressure from you from the guys? Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, just his length, you know, he, he blocks a lot of shots. I'm not sure how many he had. Uh, exactly, but he would have changed another five or so, and I think, um, you know, having that anchor on the defensive end for us is amazing. And and as a guard, it, it does give you that confidence to climb into the ball, knowing that there is that rim protection for sure. Uh, John, we'll turn to you. Uh, Carl Heitz, uh, John Curry from the Age here. Um, what did you make of the emotion out there, I guess, after that creep dunk? And was there, were there any concerns the incident could have perhaps got a bit worse than what it was? Uh, look, I mean, the, the emotions are always high in a, in a tight game like that. Um, I think Simon addressed it um, from our end, but, you know, it's um, it's a game. Emotions are high, and that's kind of how things go at times. I think, you know, as, as Simon said, Pete Ling, Barlow, uh, Zaya, all those guys, you know, they're good guys. I, I, I didn't see it getting out of control by any means, um, but, you know, emotions are high, and you, and you just got to take care of it. Um, Dean Vickerman as well, that was the timeout his players obviously and he was saying that um, he wanted these players to attack you and he was saying you're the worst sort of defender in the competition. Um, do you feel sure that was just like the heat of battle and something the coach would say or you know, do you take that to him personally? Uh, oh, I mean, I take it personally a bit, but, um, you know, that's for Dino to say. Heat of battle, emotion, whatever, whether they believe that or not, that's fine. So we, um, I just go back and climb into the ball and, and keep doing the things that we put together as a defensive structure and as a unit. Thanks, Scott. Thanks, John. Mick, we'll finish up with you, mate. Go for it. Yeah, thanks, Ohio, Simon and Kyle. Um, just quickly, I thought the first four minutes was probably some of the best basketball I'd seen from both teams. It was pretty incredible just before that time out. Can you, was it, did you really want to come out and just stand up your authority on the game? Um. We want to come out and execute. I mean, you go in with a, a game plan um, and ways that you want to go about things and who you want to isolate and targets you want to sort of um, go to from an offensive standpoint and guys on their roster who aren't great defenders that we want to target as well. Um, so, yeah, there, there, there's, there's that. And I thought we were pretty good at it. Um, they probably got a little bit of what they wanted out of it maybe too, but I thought defensively we held up pretty strong. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it was a pretty high standard game. I think you got some reasonable basketball teams out there on the floor tonight and um, you know I, I think the expectation should be that you see a clash in a, in a battle like that.
we spoke um, a couple of nights ago after the Breakers game, and, and obviously, you know, you said that you, that you didn't like United, and there is more feeling in it. Can you talk a bit about the emotion going into that game and throughout? Um, do, you live, do you live for it? It's, it's probably something you refer to the players on, um, more so. I, I think from us, from our standpoint, I mean, our pre-game speech, we weren't touching on any of that. It's more strategic and, and, and how we want to go about um, executing against them from both sides of the ball. Um, we did touch upon being about the emotion will happen, but it's got to be organic, and being the first to calm ourselves when it does hit that spot. And I think we did that, and I think that's how you, you win ball games and emotional games, is that, OK, you're going to lose your, your, your head for a little moment there. It, it happens in a, in, a, in a charged game. But it's who can settle down and execute and, and stay to the game plan or return back to a game plan um, that's going to that's gonna take care of their business. And I thought we did that. Are you, are you, are you proud of your guys coming off like less than 48 hours to come out and put an effort like that on the floor? Uh, yeah, for sure. Um, you know, like, we've spent our whole week preparing for New Zealand. Um, we've really, outside of a, a video session yesterday um, where we reviewed our game against New Zealand, things we liked, things we didn't like, things we need to work on, and then we just watched some video of Melbourne, our game against them, their game against Sydney. Just, you know, we, we got it all done inside of an hour, um, so our preparation was, was not enormous. Um, I think for us it was more about getting our bodies right um, and making sure that, uh, you know, physically we were ready to go. Um, you know, it's probably worked a little bit in our favour, I guess, that um, we had them in the pre-season just prior to the regular season starting. So it's still relatively fresh for us. You know, we got New Zealand, who are completely the opposite sort of team. You know, highly structured, um, lots of different angles that they attack you from, heavy the on-balls, uh, you know, like very, very strategized uh, game plan to Melbourne, who are you know trying to draw fouls, get their head on the rim, um, you know, try and up the pace in transition a little bit more, and so it's, 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 it's yin and yang, chalk and cheese, it's complete opposite. So, really proud of the guys from that perspective that we go from one standpoint or one uh, style of play and, and making the adjustment. Um, so yeah, pr always proud of my guys when they come out and play hard. Just one more for Kyle, can you talk a little bit about the intensity of the, of the throwdown for us and just give us an insight into, like, it looked like both teams are going very hard at each other, probably, you know, like, I felt at the start of it uh, Friday night. Yeah, I mean... Uh... I think the crowd also lifts it. Um, you know, there is a little bit of a split. You've got some Phoenix fans in the crowd. You've got some United fans. And I think um, they sort of bring that emotion up a little bit as well, which is which is great for the sport of Mel uh, basketball and, and the city of Melbourne. So, um, you know, us as players, we feel that. Sometimes you write off the crowd a little bit at times. And I think the, um, the crowd, along with the, you know, physicality of the game, definitely sort of always makes it for a great battle between two great teams. And just one more quickly, throw us forward. I mean, you, you sort of hit the road now. Is that sort of something that you have to steal yourself for? I think you're away until about the 10th of January. Um, I think we might come home in, inside that time. But, yeah, I mean, look, we're road warriors. We, we, we've been, hey, do whatever. Send us wherever we've got to go. Uh, and we don't know. Like, you've you got to do everything at the drop of the hat in, in this uh, time and day. But, yeah, I mean, we've got some serious competition coming up um, on the road. Um, between now and the 10th of Jan, but that's good. Um, it, it's a, it's another opportunity for us as a as a group to develop, um, to build towards what we think we can become, um, and it's going to be some great tests for us. You know, we're going to get going up against, um, you know, on evidence yesterday, two of the best teams in the league um, in the in the immediate future, and then we've got a team that, that, that uh, is, is developing as well and got some win a win last night. So, it's. Um, you know, we, we've uh, we look forward to going on the road. Um, I look forward to the the atmosphere down in the Gong. Um, they're always polite to us and have wonderful things to say about us from the from the from the cheap seats. And um, and, and Sydney's a, a great place to play as well. So, yeah, I mean, it's part of us getting better. Uh, we that we, we you know we want to go out and prove ourselves on the road.